Hey guys, so it's gotten pretty cold outside. Are you complaining about being shut in for so long yet? Well, be sure to be thankful that you don't live in the north, specifically in Okmyakum, Saka Republic, Russia, or the equally horrible Antarctic Vostok Station. The low temperatures in Omyakin, I think that's a better way of saying it, greatly depend on its geography. It's in a basin that mountain air flows down into, so January, the temperatures there can be about minus 45 and a half below for weeks on end. So it's no surprise that this is called the coldest town in the world. Their record low was negative 57.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, in the 1920s, it was a stop for reindeer herders, but the Soviet government tried to settle the nomads, thinking that they were uncontrollable and make this a permanent settlement. Ironically, the word omiyakan means unfreezing water, and in honor of it being near a hot spring. Nevertheless, people live and work there, and kids even go to school. Omiyakan is home to less than 1,000 people. In general, they herd cattle, reindeer, and are fishers, and they harvest in the summer. Now, despite all that, they have internet and cellular access, as well as a small airport that was made during World War II. They have a school, a hospital, daycares, a library, a bakery, a gas station, a gym, and a shop. By the way, the school only closes if it's below negative 46 degrees Fahrenheit outside. The shortest day of the year in December is just three hours, but the summer has white nights and is sunny 24-7. The summer has huge temperature swings and can be 80 degrees Fahrenheit in the day and 32 at night. Most of the buildings, like 100 years ago, still burn coal and wood for heating. There really aren't a lot of modern amenities here. Children are dressed from head to toe in many layers with only their eyes showing. And they can only be outside on sleds because there's almost no way they'd be able to move around otherwise. Adults wear fur coats, down parkas, leather hats, deerskin fur boots, and wear two or three pairs of stockings, pants, and socks. Their faces and noses stay warm thanks to thick hats covering their foreheads and scarves up to the bridges of their noses but sometimes frostbite still occurs, nevertheless. However, nothing can change a woman's nature. There are times when women wear capron stockings under their fur coats in negative 46 degree weather, confident they won't freeze. Now, normal problems you might face in Omyakin include ink freezing in your pens and batteries losing their charge. Many people don't turn off their cars because they're afraid they might not start up again. Cars have additional heaters that use Arctic diesel fuel mixed with solar oil and kerosene. Many drivers make their own special pipe to heat up fuel. Another problem is funerals. In such cold weather, it can take up to three days to dig your grave in the frozen ground. Additionally, you need to thaw the ground first with a fire and put coal around the edges. Recently, they've been trying to develop tourism. Since 2011, Omyakin has had rallies and a cold pole festival. The region is also famous for the Lamakir Lake and Mushaya Mountain. Many tourist companies recommend visiting the village and trying to live in those conditions. If any girls want to risk this kind of free makeover for Instagram and aren't afraid of the cold, they can confidently head to Omyakin. And don't forget the world has just one other even more extreme place where people live that is on the other side of the planet. The Russian Vostok Station in Antarctica. It's on the interior of the continent in the southern geomagnetic pole surrounded by endless snow and ice. There's an ancient freshwater lake under the frozen dome the station is on. In describing the station's climate, it's enough to say there's no place colder on this planet. It seems Russians quite like the cold. 
1983, the plant's record low temperature of negative 67.3 degrees Fahrenheit was set. Over a year, temperatures usually range from negative 35 degrees to negative 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And the record max was recorded in 1957 at an unbelievably balmy minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Polar nights last from the end of April to the end of August, a whole 120 days. In the winter, wind speeds can be 112 miles per hour and more. But the low temperature isn't the biggest inconvenience for those living in Vostok. There's almost zero humidity and a lack of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The station is located over two miles above sea level. Life in the Vostok Research Station can only be envied by the most extreme travelers. Acclimation to the extreme conditions takes at least three months, and you'll undergo dizziness, shortness of breath, fainting, and more symptoms that aren't good for the body. So people don't really live at Vostok, they die slowly. People usually lose 10 to 20 pounds in their first month. The amount of oxygen is what you would find three miles above sea level near the equator. So the first problem upon your arrival is your body's reaction. Sometimes people can get sick just a few minutes after arrival, and if they aren't evacuated quickly, pulmonary edema will kill that person from a lack of oxygen in just a few days. Some people feel all right, but quickly move and understand they need to be very careful you'll instantly feel out of breath and experience tunnel vision. Getting up quickly can make you collapse from dizziness. Additionally, you'll be fatigued from shortness of breath while sleeping. To adapt to the continental Antarctic conditions and sleep normally, you need one to three months. There are usually some kind of insects all around us like mosquitoes, beetles, butterflies, or gnats, but Vostok has none. It's so unusual, you might experience hallucinations. Sometimes they feel like there are bees or flies all around them. Water comes from the surrounding snow. It has no salt or minerals, so it doesn't need to be initially purified. It's known that the scientists have been boring into Vostok Lake for a long time. In January 2011, a different type of ice, frozen from the bottom, was found at the depth of 2.2 miles down. It was frozen water from a freshwater lake. It's clean and tastes fine. It can be boiled and turned into tea without fear. There are no known life forms or locals that scientists have spoken of. Planes can only land at Vostok from the middle of December to the beginning of February. Otherwise, they can't land, and their skids simply freeze to the ice. Sometimes a motor scooter comes from the Mirny station. Otherwise, nothing is able to get there. If something happens, there's no one to help. The station's residence is completely covered in six feet of snow. There's no sunlight inside. There's a main door and an emergency one. The main door goes through a 160-foot tunnel. The emergency exit is a short spiral staircase to the snow-covered roof of the station. Now, during the winter, work requires daily exits to the open air. They need to go up to the surface through the emergency exit and walk about 1,300 feet to a small building that houses their main tools and sensors. They have to put on a down parka, warm pants, fur-lined gloves, fur mittens, snow boots, and a mask before they go outside. This all needs to be fastened down and tucked in before putting on lights in a backpack with a thermos, tools, and a computer. Sometimes they need to go out several times a day. But those days go by quicker, they joke. Otherwise, life at Vostok in its 60 years of existence is more or less set up. The life module, cafeteria, laboratory, diesel block, and other life support systems are sufficient. 
There's not enough girls, some of them complain. During the summer, there are 25 workers, but only 13 in the winter. It's worth noting that in its 60 years of use, there were only seven women during the winters there. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave us a like and let us know what you learned in the comments. See you again soon.